We are on Shkalim Perak, Dalid Mishnah Tet, ninth and final Mishnah in the fourth chapter of Shkalim. Says the Mishnah, Achalish Loshim Yom Misha'arin et Talishka. Once every 30 days, Misha'arin means they would set the Sha'ar, they would set the price for the Lishka. Just remember that we're going to see that uh, Beit Amidash was a huge, huge uh, supplier of, of materials for, for Korbanot. It had to buy a tremendous amount of materials. So therefore, it had to set prices that it was willing to buy these materials. So uh, that's what it means, Mishaarim, Poskim Shar, the Bartudera says, they established the Shar, the rate, the Yenot, Shmanim Uslato. These are the supplies, the wines, the oils, and the fine flowers. Shar Shia Mozea, Shar Shaloshim, once every 30 days they set the, they set the amount. Okay? Velochim Bechoyom, and Mimochre Yenot, Shmanim Uslato, Mashem Srikim Beoto, Aschum Shepasku. And they would accept deliveries every day. They would tell the guy, okay, this time, this today, I need 42 bushels, however much they needed. Okay, but they would set it based on the price that they set from the month before. Ve'im nityaker, we're going to see hamikach if the the if the if the materials became more expensive, and mosifin dami they didn't pay more. Ve'im huzal, but if they got cheaper, lochin the fi hazo the beit hamikdash got the discount. We'll see exactly how it works. The mission says kol mekabel alav nesapek salatot. For example, person accepts upon himself the sapek to supply salatot, fine flowers me arba. Four sa'at to the, to the, for a, what is it? Arba? Okay, it says, um, uh, Arba sa'in b'sela. Four sa'at for a sela. Whatever the amount was. So that's, it's an even amount, okay? So this guy accepted to be a supplier. So if he's mekabalela, the sapek slatot arba Four sa'at for fine flour for a sela. That was the price, whatever the price is, it doesn't matter. Okay? That's for that month, during that 30 day period. Amdu mi shalosh. The price went up now. The next day, the price went crazy, fine flour, there's nothing on the market. It's now three sa'at for a sella, much more expensive. Yes, I pick my arba. He has to supply him based on four sa'at for the sella. The Beit HaMikdash gets that price. Mishalosh ve'amdu me'arba. What if they, accept, they accepted, they made a deal, three sa'at for sella, and then the price got cheaper, and now it's four. Yes, I pick my arba. Now the Beit HaMikdash gets cheaper prices. Why? Shiyad hegdesh al ha'el yonah. Because Hegdesh, the hands of Hegdesh, Allah El Yonah, means the Hegdesh always has the upper hand. Hegdesh, the Beit Amidash, always gets the better deal. That's the deal. You want to do a deal with Beit Amidash, you want to be a supplier for them, this is the price of doing business. How does it work technically? So it's interesting because Allah, if you buy something and you make a deal, then I could understand that if it gets lower, then you have to pay lower. But why should the Beit Amidash also get the cheaper price? Okay, let's look down at the Bartanura. He says, it's technically, he says the following. Okay? Uh, the Hegdesh Kona Bekesef. Normally we say the only way you can make a Kinyan is if like you do a Kinyan, if you want to make it, you can acquire something, you make a Kinyan. Let's say I want to buy this spoon. And so I say to the owner, I say, here's 50 shekel, take the money for the spoon. Money, we've learned before, and we're going to learn again, Ma'od Enam Kono. The halacha is that money is not a Kinyan. Okay, you have to actually pick up the spoon and then that's the deal. But he says in the Beit Hamigdash, when the, when the Beit Hamigdash makes the deal, Kesef, Hegdesh is Kona Bekesef. Then the Beit HaMidash buys it with money. So the guy gives money, but the Gizbar pays in advance. Tichtiv, he says, V'natana kesef akamla. And therefore, V'im kibele, so therefore that's why, the, even though normally it's not a Kenya, nonetheless, if the price goes down, uh, if the price, excuse me, goes up, he has to honor the original price. But V'im kibele sapek shalosh se'im b'sela, v'huzlu, v'amdu arba b'sela. Let's say it got cheaper. Then, notain arba b'sela. Then you know. He, then he then he says no. My kamaot kono is not. Am I against my against the value against the benefit of hegdish? Then you say no. That the, the hegdish should benefit. The lo gara mehediot, the lo kani elam meshicha. Then hegdish says no. I don't want my money to be kona. I didn't do meshicha. I didn't. I didn't pick it up. I didn't pull it. I didn't have an official kinyan. So I don't want it at the higher price. I want it at the lower price. So the Tosas Yontov here says interesting. He says so what? That's fine. Okay. So I can say, the Gizbar says, the Gabai for the Hegdesh says, okay, I don't want to accept it. But who said, but why should the supplier have to give it at the lower price? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. I Meaning you could, you could have a, you could say, okay, the money is not Kone. I'm only Kone by Mashiach. I don't want it at the higher price. But why should that guy have to give it and supply it at the lower price? And the nearest, you can't tonight, That's a tonight, Beitin. So that, the rule is, that was the deal. You want to be a supplier for the Beit Migdash? You accept the responsibility for prices going down, and you take the loss if the price goes up. That's just the way it works. I think it was, A, worthwhile because of the yukra, the, the, the value 
the societal value, the desire to supply for Hegdish, plus it was tremendous amounts of material all the time. What supplier wouldn't want to have a, a, a purchaser like the, uh, like the Beit Amidas? Vimit liaso, that's similarly. If the fine flour became rotted because it had tola, it became infested, hat lialo, he loses it. I Meaning if they took it, even after they took it, they opened it up in the Beit Amidas and it's full of worms, sorry, we don't pay for that. Im hichmitz yayin, if the wine got sour, hichmitz lo. Similarly, the supplier always took responsibility even if the wine got sour. Even though he got the money, it doesn't become his. Until the Mizbeach Miratzah is appeased, meaning until it's accepted upon the Mizbeach, until they offered it, the flour was good, the wine was good, the, 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 uh, the oils were good. Once it's good, once the Mizbeach, once it's offered on Mizbeach successfully, then the money becomes the supplier's. But until that point, the supplier takes responsibility for anything wrong with the product. I imagine if they spilled it, he doesn't take the loss, but who knows. We'll stop here. With comments or questions, email me at arspolter at gmail.com. I'll dedicate our learnings to memory of my father, of Simcha Ben Yitzchak Kalman, and Eishat Zipporah Fega Matilda Bat Nachum Eli Melech. Have a great day.